We all know the story of the Titanic band that played on until the end and went down with the ship, but did you know that one of these instruments actually survived the disaster? Yes, this violin right here is the actual violin that belonged to the bandmaster Wallace Hartley, and this is one of the most incredible and famous artifacts ever recovered. Now, just as we see in the movies, Hartley and his band did in fact play on deck as the ship was sinking in order to keep passengers calm, and unfortunately they all perished that night. Two weeks later, Hartley's body was recovered where he was found fully dressed and with his music case strapped to his body with the initials WHH, Wallace Henry Hartley. And inside the case, they found his violin. Now, this violin was actually a present from his fiance. You can see the plaque that she got engraved for him for Wallace on the occasion of our engagement from Maria. The violin went back to Maria, then was passed on to a music teacher for the Salvation Army. And in 2013, it sold at auction for $1.7 million. Here's a really random Titanic movie fact. So we're all familiar with this man here, James Cameron. He's a director of Titanic arguably one of the best romances of our generation. Now, what you may not know is that the actual romance was not on screen. It was actually on set, so forget about these two for a second. So James Cameron had actually been married four times when he started filming Titanic. This is his wife number four, Linda Hamilton, who was an actress in Terminator, which he directed. Basically, he was like, okay, see ya, let's go for wife number five. And he found that special number five on Titanic. Here we can see them on set together. And yes, I'm talking about her. If you don't remember, this is Lizzie from Titanic who plays Rose's granddaughter in the movie. That is actress Susie Amos and James Cameron hired her, sparked a romance on the set of Titanic, and they've been married ever since 2000. And it looks like it's going strong. So you know what? Good for him. Lasted longer than this couple. Yep, the Titanic is in fact disappearing. It's probably going to be completely gone in the next 10 years. Sadly, yes, this is true. The wreck of the Titanic is deteriorating and will eventually be gone completely. Uh, this right here is an artist's depiction uh, showing some of the major changes throughout the years. And this is a composite of the bow or forward part of the wreck uh, comparing 1987 to 2012. And you can definitely see some changes. For example, if you look at the crow's nest in the bottom picture, the nest used to be there and then up here on top. It is now gone. Another major change is this right here, a fan favorite. Uh, what we're looking at is the officer's quarters and we can clearly see Captain Smith's bathtub. This was taken in 1996. Then we can see in the 2010s, the bacteria had eaten away at the walls and the ceiling and there was a lot of debris on the bathtub. And this was taken this year and now we can barely see the bathtub because of all the damage. So yes, the wreck will eventually disappear. Now the question is, should we salvage as much as we can before it does? What do you guys think? What you see here is a real piece of the Titanic being pulled from the ocean floor. And this piece is on display to this day. This of course is the very famous Titanic artifact known as the Big Piece. Very creative, I know. The Big Piece is currently on display at the Titanic exhibit at the Luxor Hotel in Las Vegas. Now you may be wondering, how did a piece of the Titanic end up in Las Vegas? You may also be wondering, is that me? Yes, this is me in 2015 about to go enter the exhibit. I was uh, pretty excited. The big piece was found in the debris field and pulled out of the ocean floor in 1998. Here we can see some footage from the expedition. As you can see, the piece was incredibly well preserved. You can still see some glass on the porthole here. However, that was the second attempt at salvaging it. Two years prior in 1996, a rope snapped and it fell all the way back to the bottom. After restoration, it eventually made it to its current home in Las Vegas. And the piece comes from Sea Deck, which would have been here on the real Titanic. This is a great question. Why would the big piece of the Titanic end up in Las Vegas of all places and not somewhere more significant to the Titanic? And the simple answer is that this piece belongs to the company that happens to run that exhibit in Las Vegas. Basically, the Titanic artifact exhibit is run by a company called RMS Titanic Inc. And RMS Titanic Inc. is the official salver in possession of the wreck of the Titanic, which means they have exclusive rights to salvage artifacts. And I mean, that, that's a whole other story of how they even got to that position. A bunch of lawsuits. I'll make another video about that. Basically, RMS Titanic Inc. funded the expedition to pull the big piece from the water. Uh, and legally speaking, they own that artifact so they can choose to put it wherever they want, which is why it now resides in a pyramid in the middle of the desert. Who exactly owns the wreck of the Titanic? The simple answer is this company, RMS Titanic Inc. 
Now, in the previous video, I mentioned that RMS Titanic Inc. is the official salver in possession of the wreck, meaning they have sole salvage rights. But in order to get to that point, it was quite the legal process. Let's go back to 1985 when Dr. Robert Ballard discovered the wreck of the Titanic. Now, almost immediately, there was a mad scramble. There were various groups claiming ownership of the wreck. Basically, a company called Titanic Ventures co-sponsored a survey, and in 1987, they pulled a bunch of artifacts from the ocean. They then showed the artifacts on a live TV show, which generated a lot of negative public backlash. People were claiming that they were basically grave robbers. So they sort of backed off. But then in 1992, another company called Merrick Titanic tried to claim the wreck from Titanic Ventures, which sparked a huge legal battle as to who would own the wreck. At the same time, Titanic Ventures sold their stake to RMS Titanic Inc. And then they eventually won their court case and were named Salver in Possession. Okay, so I get asked this question all the time. So let me give you my thoughts. I am in favor of salvaging artifacts from the debris field. I don't support cutting in and destroying the superstructure of the wreck itself. It's a gravesite, so that needs to be respected. At the same time, I'd rather see the artifacts in a museum where people can go in there and see that and connect with the true stories of the people from the disaster. From a personal experience, I've been obsessed with Titanic since I was like seven, eight years old. And when I went to Titanic Museum and saw real artifacts and a piece of the Titanic, Yo, that was breathtaking. I straight up cried. You, it, it, you really feel connected to the people. So I think it's a better way of remembering the stories, having them in a museum. People 50 years, 100 years from now, they'll be able to see that and truly connect with the disaster. I know a lot of people don't necessarily agree, and that's okay. Uh, and I'm not a descendant of somebody who was on the Titanic, but I think we need to salvage respectfully. This is the big piece of the Titanic being brought up to the surface. Basically, in 1996, the salvage team devised a plan to lift the 15-ton piece of the hull using a system of lift bags filled with diesel fuel since it's lighter and more buoyant than water. This piece of the hull, called the Big Piece, was discovered in the debris field near the stern of the Titanic. Now, in 1996, during an expedition, the team attempted to raise it. Unfortunately, as the piece was approaching the ocean surface, a sudden storm struck and the ropes holding the big piece snapped, and it descended all the way back to the ocean floor, landing vertically in the seabed. Recovery efforts were renewed in 1998, and on August 10th, a giant winch slowly raised it out of the ocean, with the sun glimmering through the portholes for the first time in more than 85 years. The piece was then sent to California for restoration, and then it ended up in the Titanic Museum in Las Vegas. And yes, that is me in the picture. Okay, if you're into the Titanic and are part of the online Titanic community, you may have come across this individual here, Aaron1912. Now, this person is infamous within the Titanic community, so I'm going to tell you why. So Aaron1912 runs a YouTube channel and he gained a lot of notoriety within the Titanic community because he put out a video called Aaron1912 The Titanic Sunny where basically he claims that the Titanic actually broke in a V. He's a big proponent of the V break theory. And if you're wondering what that is, it's basically exactly as it sounds. It's a theory that states that the Titanic broke in a V. So basically the bow kind of rose up out of the water and it broke like this. <laughs> His entire theory is based solely off of passenger testimony and this famous Jack Thayer drawing that you see here. Now, there's a lot of infighting and drama within the Titanic world online, but the one thing that everybody can agree on is that this theory is ridiculous. There's a lot of YouTube videos debunking it because it defies the laws of physics, makes no sense. On the Titanic, there was one Egyptian passenger and he did in fact survive. This is Hamad Hassab from Cairo, Egypt. He was a first-class passenger on the Titanic and the only Egyptian on the ship. Now, Hamad was fluent in English, French, German, and of course, Arabic, which allowed him to make many international friends, two of those being an American couple named Mr. and Mrs. Harper who invited him on board the Titanic. On the night of the collision, Hamad was awake and walking around when he overheard some crew members talking about the collision and the possibility of the ship sinking. So he immediately ran back to tell the Harpers and they ran up to the boat deck. All three were quickly able to board lifeboat number three because at that point in the night, no one really wanted to evacuate. This was one of the first lifeboats to leave and Mrs. Harper was even able to bring her dog on the lifeboat. This thing here was the dog. A few days after Hamad was saved, he wrote this letter back home to his family to let them know he was safe. However, they didn't receive it and they were unaware of his safety until they were reunited three years later in 1915. So yes, on the Titanic, there was a mailroom and it was located near the very bottom of the ship. 
The post office was located on G deck on the starboard side and toward the bow of the ship, which means it was actually one of the first places to start flooding when Titanic started sinking. Now, the Titanic was carrying a lot of mail because it was a Royal Mail ship or Royal Mail steamer. That's what the RMS and RMS Titanic stands for. And there were five postal clerks working in Titanic's mailroom to handle all of this mail. After the collision, the Orlop deck was one of the first places to start flooding, which is also where all of the mailbags were being held. So the postal clerks made a desperate attempt to move all the mailbags up to G deck where the post office was. They quickly tried to haul all the mailbags from down here up to the post office, but unfortunately the post office quickly started flooding and sadly none of the postal clerks survived the sinking. Let's talk about Rose's famous red dress for a second. Actually, let's talk about all the costumes in Titanic. How accurate were they for the time period? They were in fact very accurate, and costume designer Deborah Lynn Scott did an extensive amount of research trying to capture the styles and trends of the day. For example, Rose's famous sailing day dress was inspired from a dress found in a real French catalog in 1912. The movie also did a very good job in capturing the essence of ocean liner culture back then. This would have included multiple outfit changes, especially for dinner like we see in this scene. A lot of the first class ladies would have been coming back from Paris and eager to show off their brand new dresses, gowns. And Deborah Lynn Scott cleverly uses clothes to show us Rose's character development. Ladies back then would have worn their hair up to emulate this Gibson girl style, but we often see Rose wearing her hair down. Corsets were absolutely commonplace back then, and Rose feels like she's shackled into the norms of the day, wanting to break free. And she clearly does, as we see here. <laughs> okay, let's look at the second and third class fashion on the Titanic, because it's not really talked about too often. But we need to remember that although second and third class passengers were not as lavish as first class passengers, by no means were they walking around with rags. They wore pretty nice clothing, and they were proud of what they wore. This is a depiction of a third class area from the Titanic and the Olympic from that time, and you can see this is what third class would have looked like. The ladies would have worn dresses that were definitely more modest than first class, but certainly inspired by a lot of the high fashion coming from Paris. Many third class ladies would have also purchased dresses that were fashionable a few years back, so they may have gotten a dress from 1908 instead of 1912. But they would have tried to keep up with the latest trends, just in a more toned down fashion. Their hats may have been smaller, they would have used different materials as opposed to real feathers, for example, but they certainly would have been proud of looking good and wearing nice things. Here's a portrait of a third class family, the Goodwin family, you can see what the ladies are wearing, and the LaRoche family from second class. What's good, Titanic nerds? It's Raph the Titanic Guy Avila here. Thank you so much for watching this TikTok compilation. If you guys enjoyed the video, please don't forget to drop a like and to subscribe to the channel and join our community of Titanic nerds. Also, let me know down in the comments, was there enough room for Jack on the door or the piece of wood or was Rose just being selfish? Let me know. Also, uh, don't forget to click some of these links here. The, some of these videos are really, really cool. I think you're gonna like them or don't. I can't force you to do anything. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.